something that you said earlier as well, which is interesting, is like, um, I guess the concern about uh, people not reporting transactions, not reporting and yeah. uh, their taxes. And let's be honest, you know, people aren't doing it now, are they? <laughs> like, as you said, you know, no. it's like, it's like one of the easiest uh, ways to hide your, your income or your money or your assets is to just have a, to get a UK company, actually. And people always think about this crazy island. Actually, no, a company in the UK is often the best way. It's what like OneCoin did, for example, to hide all of their dodgy uh, financing. Yes, um, because yes. you can just get one like that on the internet. It takes no yeah, time. Yeah, it takes three minutes and it costs you virtually no money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you can basically hide who owns it, all sorts of things like that. It's kind of technically, you should be able to, but you can't. But I, so I guess like people are already doing it. There's already ways to hide your money. There's already ways to not pay your taxes. There's already ways to get around it even legally. So I feel like with cryptocurrency, it's more that people are, it's more the government's just like, we don't want another way for people to do it. Like we just don't, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's another way. Uh, can we, it doesn't really give any benefit to us right now. Well, then yeah. let's not bother with this. Um, so I suppose, um, I, I think that, that criticism people often have of crypto is, is no, to that degree, I guess, because yeah, it's just another way that someone can abuse something that people are already using other things anyway. Um, but I guess um, uh, the other thing, I suppose, as you were kind of hinting at, was that like, um, I suppose if you if you make custodial, non-custodial solutions almost dressed up like they are custodial, right? Like simple enough to use, like it's a bank account, or really similar to what people are used to, um, then potentially you've got the answer to that solution of like how do you get people to, to, to do things. But I guess the other thing as well is like um, like I was watching a, I think it was Bill Gates on, in 1995 on an American talk show. I can't remember which one it was. And the guy's, you know, he's like, I've heard you can now listen to uh, the baseball game on the internet. It's like, why do I want to do that? And then he's like, well, you know, it's, it's cool. And then he's like, oh yeah, I've got the radio. I need that. And he's like, you can record it. Well, I've got tapes. You know, people just didn't get the internet like at all at that point. So I'm thinking we're there at crypto, right? Like, surely in ten years' time, people will have a better education, a better understanding, um, and these problems will be more sort of in the past. I would hope. I hope so, the, uh, and I hope that all the 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 whole movement around crypto, meaning the and especially the value movement part of the crypto, yes, because uh, just as internet uh, internet uh, meant uh, evolution in the information movement uh, um, uh, paradigm, uh, crypto will mean an evolution in the value movement paradigm, meaning that you will start to move uh, value in a different thing and uh, in a different way. And with this uh, new thing, uh, it's also... Uh, will also help humanity on one hand uh, bypass, I hope, some of the anachronisms that you find in, in the current uh, uh, banking and financial system. And on the other hand, maybe by, by reducing the link between uh, money and the state, or uh, ideally severing it completely, Maybe people will start to realize that uh, a lot of the things that the state and the government does are not uh, really necessary. And uh, uh, maybe in the absence of some things which are regulated by the state or are done by the state, uh, private solutions will, will appear. And at the end of the day, everybody would be better off not having to deal, I mean, in, in, a, in a country, you don't really have to uh, worry as, a, as a, an individual citizen with what happens with the uh, people that didn't receive their uh, government salary in a, in a community which is uh, uh, 100 or 1,000 kilometers away. You, you cannot do anything uh, about it. So why not focus, focus on, on your local community on your, uh, you know, having a smaller uh, or or in closer geographically to the person, uh, government, and you know, moving towards uh, uh, less distributed, if you will, uh, form of government instead of having countries, maybe focusing more on counties, maybe focusing more more on like cantons and what what are uh, forms of. Uh, organization in, in, in other countries which uh, work uh, pretty much, uh, pretty good. And uh, I, I will go back to this uh, thing that I said about anachronism. So 
I will give you a single example. I, I mean, today when you do your, when you do a card transaction, uh, this card transaction, you have a card that is issued by a bank, and you uh, put your your card either uh, physically or virtually in a in a terminal. Uh, um, term, uh, physically, if you are in a store and you tap your card or you put it in in, in a terminal, or virtually if you are on a payment uh, page or you use Apple Pay on 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 the web and uh, you do a, an online transactions. And this transaction today, even today, which is like uh, uh, 60 years or 70 years since the first car transaction has been has been done, even today the uh, car transaction is done in two steps. One is the authorization phase, in which your your bank, the, the bank that issued your cards, confirms to the bank that tries to. Uh, to, to, to process the payments that you have indeed the money. And then there is a settlement phase in which one day or depending on a lot of uh, parameters, the money, the, the, there are some files that are being sent from one bank to another uh, through Visa and MasterCard and Amex and uh, JCB and Discover and what other uh, networks are there. And then the money will actually exchange hands. And if you if you look at it historically back in the 1980s it it made sense because then uh, you would th there were no electronic there were no online payments everything was done with a piece of paper you had this imprinter uh, that would uh, uh, take the details from your credit card you would sign it and then there would be a, a, a settlement phase where this physical checks uh, ended up in your account and then the money exchanged hands. But this settlement phase in, 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 in the crypto settings doesn't make sense at, at all. And it's very easy to disappear. And, and uh, what's the effect of this phase disappearing mean, means that um, any merchant or, or any entity that, that processes a payment now can, can use the funds now. It doesn't have to wait for one day or three days or five days or two weeks, depending on, on the processing uh, card processing uh, agreements that they have with the bank or whoever, whoever processes their payments, they, they can use the money now. And, and this is uh, like the crypto, uh, all the crypto transaction network uh, uh, value movement figured out a way in which, yes, uh, in 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 ten minutes or in, in I know that Bitrefill does zero conf uh, transaction, so instantly you can benefit from your uh, goods and the merchant uh, benefits in the same instant from the money. So nobody has to have a second phase and another infrastructure that handles handles this settlement phase. You make a good point, yeah, about essentially the the idea that these you have these two phases kind of being. Yeah, unnecessary and almost obsolete. I suppose something that you mentioned as well in there um, when you were talking about obviously you know the changes to taxes and almost the changes to the way we see governments um, and borders to a degree. And this is something that I've, I find really interesting actually because um, with Bitcoin, right, with its design, the way it's impacted the world, to me, I can see two really almost complete opposite effects that it has. And one is that obviously it's a global currency, right? It's not tied to a country, so immediately it could just be a world currency and obviously it kind of almost it, it contributes to the whole internet side of things where the whole world is opening up and it feels like everyone's closer together because you can all contact each other and on the other flip side i can almost see that like bitcoin has this ability to like support local communities and local businesses and smaller businesses it's a way almost for people to fight back a little bit at the established bigger companies so i kind of see like bitcoin doing like nothing for the middle which is kind of like having a country border with a big government but much more for as you said like this smaller local community style of running things but also kind of like you're a small local community but you're a big part of the whole world rather than just a country um i didn't know like um i didn't know if you saw that as just as a good as an overall a good thing but also I guess if you you know if if you can think of any ways that like Bitcoin because obviously its adoption is going this way I didn't know if you can yeah. think of any ways that it was it could be sped up or it, you know it, or if you, if it can almost be harmful to a degree that this is happening. Uh, I think that in in the the way in which the Bitcoin's adoption will be sped up is exactly because of the of this decentralization that happens in the 
in the work markets. Yes, meaning that today there is in maybe half of the economy, there is no uh, requirement for a people performing a job to be physically located where the job is needed. Yes, and, and the, this last year, this last year and a half has, has uh, underlined that this is indeed the case. So as long as you have no need for a person that is doing a job in, for a company in Cincinnati to be located in Cincinnati, uh, then the next step is, okay, so how, how does this person receive the money for the, 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 for the job that he's done for the company in Cincinnati? Well, with a network that is, uh, that is uh, distributed and hopefully the government cannot uh, uh, impact it, meaning that cannot block or, or, or anything else, because I will go back in, in a bit to one aspect that this means. And uh, you would not be uh, uh, subject to this two-phase uh, authorization and settlement and everything will happen in, in an instant. And you can even think about uh, what crypto can do, uh, can enable people to be paid like uh, instantly and continuously, meaning that as long as I'm sitting at, at uh, my computer and I do something, I don't know, maybe I write code, maybe I check some things in an, in an Excel file, then every click that I give uh, it means another Satoshi that, that is uh, wired into my, into my account. And th this is uh, with, with all the Bitcoin uh, and, and uh, other uh, constructions on top of it, this is achievable today. And um, I, I, will, I will go back now to, to what I said about the work market, the, the work uh, landscape and how it has changed. And consider the fact that today, if you are like, uh, I don't know, even me, as, I, as I'm a Romanian citizen, if I go to US and want to work for this company, for this hypothetical company in Cincinnati, I would not be able to, to do. To, to go there because uh, there is, uh, I would need a work permit, I would need uh, whatever, a green card or, or some other work, uh, some other work uh, regulated uh, employment form. But uh, in, in this distributed, uh, distributed information, distributed uh, value, uh, in internet based uh, thing, I, I don't need all this uh, work uh, regulation. The, 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 I, I always say that the the disemployment restrictions can't be uh, enforced through firewalls because that that would be the the, the last point where where they would have a, like uh, you cannot work if you're not there you you cannot you can only implement it at a firewall level otherwise you cannot stop for somebody in India to take a job in San Francisco as someone that started a crypto company in Romania, how difficult is it to um, get licenses or permits or, or all the regulatory burden that you need to deal with? It's uh, pretty It's pretty difficult, especially in the last, I, and I would refer strictly now to the EU and things happen by, by extension in Romania. It's difficult, especially in the last uh, three years, I think, or maybe two, when EU has introduced, on, on one hand, the EU introduced some legal requirements for all uh, custody, uh, custodial wallets and uh, cryptocurrencies exchanged. But what they, what they failed to do, and this was more the job of the local authorities, they failed to, to issue norms for how this, uh, the so-called ML5 directive is to be implemented. And now we, we find ourselves in a sort of a, a limbo or a zombie land where there is a regulation, but there are no norms for applying these regulations. So whenever you want to do something, for instance, okay, I have these regulations, which means that uh, I can open a bank account. Guess what? Uh, no, because uh, the, the regulation says that you need to do this, but uh, the bank would say, uh, but because there are these non, the, the, 
the norms don't, don't exist. I don't know what I have to ask from you in order to prove me that you do your uh, job according to the regulation or this kind of, uh, uh, you know, things that uh, one thing ends here and the other one starts here. So what's in between, it's uh, everybody's interpretation based on whoever you talk to. So obviously with you being uh, part of the the first exchange in Romania, like how, because obviously there's, there's, there's the environment now where obviously there's this regulation in the EU um, and there's obviously yeah, regulations growing everywhere, like in the US and the UK, they're quite prohibitive for, for new businesses, um, especially. Uh, and I mean, even older ones like Binance is suffering in the UK with, with regulatory issues right now. Uh, like when it came to back in 2013, I think would it be when it was when you started uh, the exchange there, like that it's, it's 2015. Be, 2015. 2015, sorry. Um, yeah. It's got to be a very different environment, right? Surely, because there's no yeah. regulations at that point. So like, how did you go yeah. about, I'm interested to like see how you went about, because obviously there's no regulations. Uh, I'm assuming that people are a little bit, well, some people are much more willing to work with you and some people are much more reticent. Um, like, how did you go about getting that fiat gateway aspect? Because mm -hmm. obviously as the first exchange too in that country, it's got to be quite difficult to, to uh, We, we, I mean, because we were already uh, in the payment uh, business for uh, for six, seven years by then. Now we are well, like twelve years. Uh, because we were in the in the business, we knew that there are some uh, instances, and we we tried to you know apply the same kind of thinking. So if we do for this kind of payments. We treat them in this way from the from the regulatory point of view, and this regulatory point of view meant simply uh, regulations around KYC and AML. So if we treat them this way, this uh, like uh, cards and uh, uh, what other uh, types of payments we were doing, let's try to apply the same the same rules and the same, uh, uh, if you will, uh, template for this uh, for this. Uh, area as well so this that, that's what we try to do so in a way and and this by the way i think it's a story that you will you will find talking to any uh business that is related to crypto in in the in the willing or, or in the preparation for for the regulation that will come at some point or will uh, or, or some interpretation that must uh, will be done at some point by some government agency or by some law enforcement. They all all the crypto businesses are more proactive and they try to do more than they they would be required if they strictly follow the law. I, I think that this is the case in 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 all uh, in all uh, uh, instances that I've been interacting with other crypto related businesses it means that there are there is a sort of an over uh, reaction and uh, you know willingness to do more than you are legally required to do just because you know you you need to cover a lot more bases if you are in the crypto area than otherwise mm -hmm.